I'm Matt Picardle and I'm a licensed civil engineer in California, specializing in structural engineering. Basically designing buildings so they don't fall down during earthquakes. Here's what my typical day is like working from home. 6.30 a.m. I wake up to my alarm and I am not the morning person. Mm. I put on my high definition glasses and switch to sleepy potato mode for a couple minutes. I check out my Gmail, watch some YouTube videos. Then I finally get up, shower, moisturize, brush my teeth, and get my hair did. The final step in waking up is my morning cold brew coffee. Around 7.30 a.m., I'm gonna start studying for my structural engineering board exams, which is in a couple months. So I'm catching up on studying. Now it's time to finally get ready for work. I put on my work shirt, my work boots, and I do my morning commute to the office. I check my emails, then I get started on my projects. This morning, I'm putting together our calculation package and our structural drawings for a permit submittal later this week. Eleven a.m. I have a coordination meeting with the architect and contractor to coordinate the final footing elevations for one of our buildings. Around eleven thirty, my lunch arrives. At 12 noon today, I'm hosting the Structural Engineering Channel podcast, where we basically interview structural engineering professionals about their expertise and about their careers. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Around 1 p.m., I have a meeting with the engineering team to coordinate some of our submittals and our tasks. After that, I get to do some engineering design work. Today I'm working on a parking structure, so I'm just doing some preliminary calculations. So I have an idea of what the beam sizes is gonna be. Then I verified the beam designs in a software program. We got to put those designs into the structural engineering drawings. Once our designs are complete and we have the city permit, that's when the contractor can take our structural drawings and start building the building. And that's pretty much the design procedure we use for most projects. For example, when designing concrete walls for earthquakes, we use preliminary hand calculations to get some quick sizes of the walls, model these in some fancy software programs, see how they perform during earthquakes, finalize the design with the software, and put the design in the structural engineering drawings or blueprints. I have my engineering library at home, and I constantly use them to check out the building codes and reference engineering books. Let's go for a walk. It's a good way for me to de-stress, but also to keep my mind engaged in learning, whether it's listening to audiobooks, podcasts, or even taking a course on Brilliant, who have very kindly sponsored this video. Brilliant has a lot of courses in math, science, physics, and even engineering. I like Brilliant because they make it easy to learn complex subjects. They have clear, easy to understand lessons and illustrations, as well as showing you how these lessons apply in the real world. I recently made a video where I absolutely failed at a bridge making game. No! Oh! So I'm taking Brilliant's scientific thinking course on structures. The course presents physics and trusses in a way that's practical in the real world because for me, I find it easier to learn subjects when I can actually see the practical applications of it. They also have a physics of the everyday course that includes skyscrapers where they go over practical engineering of tall buildings such as wind and airflow interactions, instability due to height, and the use of damp oscillators to counteract wind and earthquake forces. Things that we actually design buildings for in structural engineering. Go to brilliant.org slash and sign up for free to check out their courses. 
The first 200 subscribers will also get 20% off the annual premium subscriptions. Thank you to Brilliant for providing this great discount and for sponsoring this video. Around 4.30, I'm back in my natural habitat and I'll be doing some detailing work. At 6 p.m., my day is pretty much done. I'm the program's co-chair this year for the ASCE OCYMF, or the American Society of Civil Engineers. And today, I'm just having a meeting with one of our members. 7 p.m., dinner time. I'm terrible at cooking food, but I'm pretty good at plugging stuff in and heating stuff up and making sure that they don't burn too much. And perfect. Damn it! Eaten while I catch up on WandaVision and some anime. It's around 8 p.m. I switch to productive potato mode where I'm watching anime and working on some YouTube ideas and scripting at the same time. My first world problem of the day is that I have more screens in front of my face than I have eyeballs. I eventually wear out and go full on unproductive potato mode. 11 p.m. Before I go to bed, I like to go through a gratitude exercise just to de-stress. As engineers, it's so easy to be caught up in an endless cycle of always stressed out because of the constant deadlines and jumping from one project to the next. But for me, practicing gratitude allows me to recalibrate my perspective on my stress and my problems. It helps get me out of my victim mentality and I remind myself of how fortunate I am to be an engineer that's able to work from home at this time and be able to work on impactful projects that I'm proud to be a part of and to be able to have the quality of life that I'm able to live and to be surrounded by supportive friends and family. And as a reminder, if you want to give Brilliant a try, I left all the details in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.